Hey guys, and welcome to this uh, very unexpected episode of The Bad Idea Bros. Uh, today you're joining me as I go to pick up a motorcycle that I've purchased sight unseen off of Trade Me, which uh, for those of you that aren't in New Zealand is basically our version of Craigslist or Gumtree. Now the bike is a wee 1972 Honda CT90, a wee trail. So very similar to the Honda Cubs, um, same motor, that sort of deal. They don't have the plastic leg fairing, they're a little more rough and ready from what I know. I've never actually owned one, so this is an exciting day for me. Uh, the thing that I find the coolest about these bikes is that they're actually a clutchless manual. Uh, we four speed. On top of that, with the Trail 90, they actually have a high-low ratio gearbox. So it's a four speed manual, but you can select high-low ratio, which essentially makes it an eight speed. So those four gears in a low ratio, and then the four gears coupled again on a high ratio. So that'll be an interesting thing to ride. The seller has said that it should start with fresh gas and a battery, but we all know that old story, so I won't really know what I'm getting into until I've uh, got this thing home and started to pull it to pieces. Now, the plan for the bike is to restore it, essentially, just to bring it back to factory fresh. I've wanted one of these for a long time. I've never been able to find one in the right sort of condition for the right sort of money. So it's just been a waiting game. And that's paid off today, seemingly. So I will carry on driving to pick up the bike and I will see you guys shortly. Thanks for watching. I am one very happy man right now. So as you can see, it's unceremoniously being dumped in the back, but it's the only way I could get it to fit in the van. So hopefully nothing leaks out of it on the way home. I don't have far to go, fortunately, so fingers will be crossed for that one, but super happy. It's, uh, it's in a lot better condition than it actually looked on the advert. There's a wee bit of surface rust, but nothing too bad. Um, I didn't go over it with a fine tooth comb because Obviously I bid on it, sales final, I own it, but super happy with this, uh, it's got a lot of potential, so we'll get it home and unloaded, put it into my workshop and yeah, start a tear down I suppose, I might um, muck around with the engine first and see if I can get it to kick over, um, it rolled freely, so the engine doesn't seem to be seized which is a, a good thing. Uh, the seller did make a comment that it was turning over and whatnot, so we'll see. It'll definitely need a battery. Um, fuel could be old, and hey, we'll chuck a spark plug in, obviously. But you'll hopefully see a lot of this wee thing in the upcoming episodes. I've got some plans for it, so time will tell. But right now, I need to get this thing home and in the workshop. Okay, so the very first job I wanted to complete on this one was dumping the oil. Uh, the reason I started here is that the condition of the oil is usually a pretty good indicator of what's going on inside your motor. Uh, in the case of this particular CT90, when I pulled it out, I noticed the oil was a bit of a strange color and it had a really strong smell of fuel. Now that wasn't super surprising just because the bike has been sitting for some time 
with fuel in the tank and the pet cock open there's been some fuel leak by the piston and down into the lower part of the motor so not really unexpected at all uh, the sump plug was in pretty good condition, threads weren't damaged or anything which was uh, which was nice and made it easier to talk back up. Uh, in regards to topping the motor back up, uh, it was just used a 10W40 that I have here uh, in the workshop. I use it in a lot of the bikes, the keyways uh, run this particular oil, so it was just on hand and easy to use for the CT. It should be fine, maybe a, a little thin um, for an older motor, but it was worth just using the motor won't be run too hard and it might not even go yet so we'll we'll see how that goes but uh, you can see on the end of the filler cap there is the dipstick so made sure that it was at the right level before we carried on and the next job is the spark plug so further to the oil being a good indicator of what's going on in the motor the spark plug is a good indicator of what's going on in the cylinder head now a little black a uh, little you know unburnt fuel will give you that sort of color but the plug was actually in good condition as was the diode um, that being said I'm still going to replace it with a new item just an NGK plug uh, run NGK plugs in all the bikes so uh, yeah got the appropriate one and fitted it up again the thread in the head was in pretty good condition and if you don't have one of those little uh, spark plug tools I advise getting one they make the job a heck of a lot easier so now that we established that the oil's changed and we have a good spark plug, we can't check for any spark without having a battery. Now this battery is completely toast. Uh, the wiring as you can see is in a pretty sorry state. It's been in there for some time. Uh, pulling this out I was a little bit nervous because in behind the batteries there can be all sorts of creepy crawlies. Um, I've pulled these out before and found mice. That's always a fun time. But uh, thankfully, in this case, it wasn't anything to be worried about. But uh, again, coming back to that wiring, you can see just how shoddy it is. Uh, it's got an old house terminal crushed in on the, uh, the main positive, which fell apart when I started to pull it through. So we'll get rid of that because that is just junk. And uh, we'll carry on from here. Now that that's done, it's just a matter of reversing the process we did earlier. So we'll put the battery back in its little home there. We'll get rid of this really sketchy wiring from the old battery. Um, nice thing with this little six volt battery is that the power harness is encapsulated in the battery itself. So it's just plug and play. Um, I don't know the condition of the harness in the bike. So this is just a bit of a fingers crossed moment. Okay, so we'll remove the points cover here. Uh, now that the new battery's in, that gives us a best shot of having a spark. So once this cover comes off, you can see that it's an old points ignition system. And uh, the next step is to just roll the motor over by hand. Now that does two things. That allows me to see if the motor feels bound up at all, which it doesn't. It rolls freely. And I can also check the timing marks to make sure it's going to fire when it should, which it did. So... Everything seems to be working the way it should, so let's roll this thing out and see if we can get it to run under its own steam. It's a runner. It's a runner. Holy shit.
so the wiring is not in the best of condition. I've obviously already had this apart to remove the uh, drive for the speedo cable. And I'm noticing that there's some stuff that's disconnected. Uh, if I can get my hand out of the way, this wasn't actually connected to anything. And a lot of the connections in here, they all look factory and original. But then you've got little bits like this that have clearly been taped back together. So the seller claimed this was a reasonably original bike. Um, I think that is the case, but there's been bits and pieces mucked around with, so that could hinder my progress when it comes to putting this thing back together. Uh, wiring's not a strong point of mine, so that could be a bit of a task, but so far so good. One thing I have noticed is that everything on this bike, so this is probably an easy example, is that anything there is a hole it seems to be full of like really fine dirt and grit and gravel um not surprising considering that this is a trail 90 so it's obviously been used off-road um but so far so good it's not really fighting me too much so i'll mark some of that wiring harness which is what the tape and pencil are for and i will push on So a bit of an update of where I'm at. Obviously all the hand controls, the headlight and the wiring are all disconnected from the front of the bike. We've got the bash bars, basically all the chain guard, air box, everything is off from the side of it. And it's starting to come apart. So the next part I'll be doing will be the exhaust. Uh, once the exhaust is free I should be able to get the fuel tank slash seat off. Once that's done I'm hoping to have access to the wiring harness. Once I've removed the wiring harness, I'm hoping to be able to drop the motor and then move from there and hopefully have it all down to a bare frame. So currently just draining the fuel tank into this temporary fuel container. As you can see to the right of that, there had a bit of a spill, but nothing too dramatic. So once this is drained, I should be able to remove the tank, which is also obviously part of the seat assembly on these things. And I can push forward with the uh, disassembly. Okay, so that's got the engine free from the frame. Wasn't uh, too much of a hassle. These things are pretty straightforward. There's only a top and a bottom mounting bolt. Uh, I've left the chain connected to the drive at the moment purely because of ease. But we are getting there. The frame is actually in really good condition. Um, there's some beating up on it, but nothing too dramatic. Uh, it's absolutely filthy, as you can imagine, from 48 years of use. And the motor's uh, not too bad. It's, like I said, you've seen this thing run, so it's obviously got the potential, but I'll give it a bit of a once-over and maybe give it a fresh lick of paint before uh, installing it back into the bike. But for now, we will continue on.
Okay, so that is that. Completely disassembled the bike um, with some pretty rudimentary tools, as you can probably see. Well, guys, that was a successful day. Uh, as you can see, I no longer have a CT90. I have a, a pile of parts that hopefully can be reassembled to be a CT90. Uh, all jokes aside, it was actually reasonably straightforward to disassemble this wee thing. Um, they're a basic sort of bike, as long as you have a bit of a think while you're going, they come apart pretty easily. But uh, that's all I'll be doing to this one today. There's a few other wee bits and pieces. Uh, you can see behind me that the whole front end is still basically assembled. The, the shocks are just seized into the triple tree, so I'm going to have to have a rethink about how I'm going to get those out. But uh, other than that, that is pretty much done for today. Okay guys, so that's the engine sorted out. Uh, next job is the front forks. Uh, as you can see, the boots are in bad condition. Um, everything's torn. It's, it's not the greatest. They're not a concern. That's easy enough fixed. Uh, what is a concern? Uh, the guard mounts are actually broken, um, possibly on, yeah, on both sides. So that's, that's a bit of a problem. Um, not really ideal. The other thing I've noticed is that they're not rebounding, um, so my guess is that the oil in these things is either in really poor condition or non-existent, and I won't know until I start pulling it apart. So that'll be the next job. Uh, we're going to disassemble these things and see what we're looking at. It might be a case of replacing. Um, I'm not really sure yet, but let's dig in and see what we find. Okay, so as expected, uh, the oil isn't in good condition at all. Um, hopefully that'll focus and you guys can see it's really in bad, bad shape. What's worse is this little guy up here. That, and if you can see that little part there, that should be inside the fork. That's part of the uh, thread that should be holding these top bolts in. Okay, so more bad news, unfortunately. Um, you can see that this is severely rusted. Um, this one's a little better, but not much better. These things are completely frozen um, into this lower section of the triple tree. It's, it's almost impossible um, to get these things out. So the way that these work is uh, you should be able to see there's a wee split in the base here, um, the nut basically pulls that tight which clamps these two together on the fork head itself. It's 
it's really, really in bad shape. Um, the head stock itself is not too bad, but you can see the, the rubbish that's coming out of these. It's, it's not in good condition at all, which is to be expected. Um, it's an old bike. It's not had a lot of love in regards to maintenance by the looks of it. So, yeah, this front end is is toast. Um, this front end is just garbage. So we're going to have to have a rethink about what we're doing with this and uh, go from there. So guys, uh, as you've just seen with that front end, it is garbage. So that's kind of thrown a bit of a spanner in the works on this build for me. Uh, the original plan, as I've mentioned, was to basically just disassemble this bike, get everything clean, and then clear coat over the patina and leave the bike looking as is and just do a sympathetic restoration. I've had a bit of time to muck around with the front end and I've gone through a few options. I've looked at getting a replacement standard front end, but that doesn't really fit with what I like to do. Um, I've always sort of had the thought that why replace when you can improve? So things have escalated. Um, <laughs> quite considerably as you will now see in the next photo yeah so as you can tell uh, the build's just been completely flipped on me it's gone from being a sympathetic restoration to a full-blown resto mod um, after offering up that front end to the CT frame I knew that I couldn't really continue down the original restoration path I just really enjoy how that bike looks with that front end uh, that does mean a lot of changes, uh, so that'll be a hydraulic disc front end now as opposed to the old cable drum. Uh, that's going to affect all sorts of things like the speedo cable placement, um, the rear suspension's now going to have to be changed as well. It really has just opened up a can of worms, but that's okay, I do like a challenge. Um, so I am going to go back to the drawing board now, uh, have a think about what the next steps are and carry on from there. But I'm really happy that you guys have been coming along with this journey with me, and I really do appreciate it, so thank you so much. Okay, so I've got the wiring harness all laid on the ground. Um, as I've said before, wiring is not my strong point, so I've made it look as visually close as possible to my wiring diagram as I can. Now, obviously, I've printed this out of a workshop manual and gone through with the Sharpies and marked it in the appropriate colours. So the plan now is to basically strip all the outer stuff off of the cabling and uh, just make sure everything's in good enough condition to reuse. As I mentioned before, I have bought a whole bunch of new parts, so a lot of these will be replaced. But uh, yeah, I guess starting is the hardest part, so let's get into it.
So that has gotten all the sheathing and the old electrical tape off the wiring. Um, don't know if you're going to be able to see, but there's just loads of crap inside this harness. Um, it's obviously just been kicking around. Uh, everything that came off of it was brittle and just didn't have any adhesion on the tape anymore. So it definitely, definitely needed to come off. But that's where we're at. So I'm now going to basically pick this thing apart and start laying it out in a more suitable fashion so that I can follow my diagram. Alright, so although it looks like a bit of a mess, I have finally got my head around this wiring. Uh, it took a little longer than I like to admit, but there was quite a bit to work out with this. It is a very simple loom, there's not a lot going on with these, but it still it all takes its time. There's a lot of different joints and connections you've got to figure out. So the hardest part that for me was basically figuring out a way to integrate this new wiring from these new style switches into the original loom. And you can see all those little labels everywhere. Uh, basically, my process was to isolate one particular part of the loom. So for instance, I'd take the indicator circuit out work through that initially first and then go from there and eventually I have worked my way through all the different parts of the looms and have got it all in place so yeah that really did take some time but I think that taking my time on it was probably the best uh, best route because if I tried to rush through it I was guaranteed to miss things and it just would have made it harder in the long run <laughs> So I think that's as far as we're going to go with this one today, guys. I'm very pleased to have gotten my head around that wiring finally. It's a job I've been putting off for the longest because, uh, quite frankly, I was a little bit scared of it. But being slow and methodical, I seem to have worked my way through it. So hopefully everything works at the end of the day when we plug this thing back in. So I'm finally able to get back onto the CT90. Uh, the parts that I was waiting on have all arrived. Uh, the work that I was waiting to be done has been finished. And I've got to say, I'm, I'm really stoked with this. So I'll uh, flick this camera around and give you guys a look at where I'm at with the bike currently. All right, so the uh, custom front end is now on the bike permanently. Uh, the guys at DaVinci Steelcraft have done an awesome job. So a huge shout out to those guys. Uh, all custom mounted uh, to work with the CT's frame. And as you can see, it's ready to go. So, the plan for today is to basically get this thing looking back like a motorcycle again. Uh, I want to get as far through this build as possible. I'm really running short of time uh, for a Sidge run, um, as I'm sure everyone else that's building bikes are. But, uh, yeah, that's enough of that now, guys. It's time for me to get into this thing. I'm really looking forward to seeing it in one piece. So the uh, very first part of this build is to get the center stand back on so that this bike can support its own uh, weight. As you can see, it's uh, on my bike jack at the moment. So pretty straightforward assembly um, on these things. You can see the three main parts. So we've got the center stand, center pin, brake lever, and that's the cam for the uh, spring on the center stand. And they all go in this hole here. So I've got a little bit of thread lock because there is one retaining nut to go on this thing. I uh, bought some new hardware, so new springs and such for this. And it should just be a case of greasing up that center, um, center spline or shaft, whatever you wish to call it. And uh, it should all go back together easily, so here's hoping. So those shock absorbers aren't uh, placed in properly. Um, you can see that the front are gold, the rear are silver. They're actually original keyway items. Um, I'm hoping to be able to get them color matched, so fingers crossed for that. Uh, but the next part we're on to is the rear wheel assembly. Um, so that's been 
rebuilt um, jet black paint and a few little things I need to do with this to make the speedo work. So I basically have to modify the rear wheel to take the front um, front original brake with speedo drive and such in it. Um, sprocket and everything still stays the same. So, you know, same rear axle and everything like that. But because these are alike paired, you might be able to see in there is a speedo drive. Um, so that basically turns the direction of movement from that way with another spherical gear um, to drive the speedo shaft, which is that little guy there. Um, just where my finger is, that's where the speedo cable plugs into. Now because these things run the same size drum front and rear, I'm able to use the front, well the original front inner uh, with the rear wheel hub. Um, there's a couple little modifications that have had to be made. I'll go into that a little further on, a little deeper, but right now I'm going to get the rear sprocket on. Um, there's a little bit of an assembly of that, so there's a, a few bits and pieces to make up this whole assembly. Uh, so yeah, that's next. So a little bit of an update for you guys. Um, I've got the brake assembly on and sprung. Uh, center stand, same thing. You can see the new hardware on there. Uh, swing arm is fitted, tensioned, everything's right. Um, the rear wheel, axle, suspension, those components are just set there at the moment. They're not on correctly. It's just purely to keep the bike up. Uh, you can see the tail light assembly's on. I've got the rear parcel tray and the fuel tank done. It's going a little slower than I was uh, hoping, but... It's getting done right the first time, so little uh, little things that take time. Um, all the bolts are thread locked. Everything's checked uh, to make sure it's right. Um, I think the next step will probably be wiring harness in. Uh, once the wiring harness is in, it'll be the engine. All right, guys. So uh, as mentioned before, we're now up to the wiring harness. Um, hasn't changed a heck of a lot since you guys last saw it, but it has been tidied up a bit. Um, so the whole thing's basically tidier than it was, with the exception of the handlebar area, because I'm still working through that. But uh, we will offer that up to the bike. Uh, should be reasonably straightforward to get that in. Uh, once that's done, the next part will be the motor. Uh, get that wired up, get uh, the ignition key wired up, get the handlebars on top of the uh, triple tree there. And we will be closer to having this thing looking like a motorcycle again.
just another quick update. Um, obviously got the wiring harness tucked away into the bike uh, roughly where it needs to go. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet because we've still got the motor to put in, but it's basically there. Hopefully I've done this thing right. Well guys, it's uh, time for the motor to go in. So hopefully it should just slot into its home there nicely. Uh, I've got the two mounting bolts, which uh, should take it. So again, it's just out of view behind the spring there. Just in this guy here. Yeah, exciting times. Getting closer. a really massive day but uh, made some really good progress so you can see over my shoulder that the uh, CT is looking very much like a motorcycle again and not just a, a big group of parts so I'm definitely happy with that uh, there's still a few other things I would have liked to have gotten done today but I have just run out of time there's there's nothing else I can fit in unfortunately so I've done a little bit of work off camera from the last time you've seen the bike. Um, I'll give you a quick run over of what's, what's happened there. Um, you honestly haven't missed out on anything too exciting. Just a bit of wiring and that sort of thing. Uh, today is basically focusing on the back end of the bike. So we've got a bit of work modifying the rear rim. Um, I'll go into that in more detail shortly. And I'm hoping to basically have everything from the ignition key back of the bike done by the end of the day. So uh, let me show you what we're doing today and what's been done in, off camera and we'll go from there. Alright, so as you can see guys, the bike is a lot more complete than the last time you saw it, on this side anyway. Uh, I have to start by giving a, a huge shout out to Smeagol who is a uh, designer here in Christchurch. He's done all the custom designs on the CT90 for me. So still says Honda, still says Trail 90, but it's obviously it's a custom font. Um, that being said, I've got the main cover or frame cover I suppose it's called that's on the bike now that will have to come back off because I need to muck around with the speedo uh, the air filter and air filter box is all complete now that's all done attached to the carburetor everything's done as it should be I still haven't gotten around to doing the rear shocks yet um, they're on but as I've said before they need to be painted so that's just something that has to happen uh, what else have we got so the tail light is now on um, it's all wired completely. I built a, a loom for the back of the bike. It was actually missing um, most of the stuff from the back of the bike. So it doesn't have indicators. Um, when I got it, it didn't have any wiring for the tail light or anything like that. So that's all been made. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see. No, it's just all black in there. So there's no point trying to show you that. Um, which brings us on to this nest of things. This is sort of where all the wiring ends up. So got the rect rectifier, the coil, um, everything's in there. Whoops, sorry, just bumped the camera. Uh, flasher relay or winker can or whatever you guys like to call it, that's on and wired now. Um, working through the tail lights, so we've got tail light and brake lights. These guys will be left and right indicator. Um, I have had a lot of trouble trying to source the rear indicator mounts for this thing, so my plan B is to basically make some. Um, That'll be one of today's jobs, and these ones are the battery wires. The earth will be connected from here. Uh, moving forward from that, basically we've got the points wire done. Uh, all the wiring is hidden um, under the frame cover. That's where it all ends up. Uh, horn is now mounted, and moving up to here, we've basically got a whole bunch of wiring to do at the front. Um, that will all need to be tidied up, uh, and placed into the headlight bucket, that's where it all works out. And I've also got the uh, throttle cable is now mounted to the carby. Uh, believe it or not, that was actually a keyway part, so I had a spare cable from the keyway trip. Um, so the CR152 throttle cable can actually be modified to fit a CT90. So that's handy. But guys, uh, 
that's about as far as I've gotten off camera with you guys. I'll um, show you what's next for today. The biggest job for today is going to be the, the rear rim. Um, I've obviously got the tire mounted, um, that's inflated, that's done. But because I have changed the front end to be a hydraulic brake um, with a completely different setup, different rim, there's now no allocation for the speedo. Uh, what that's meant for this is basically this little lip here, I'm going to have to modify this to take the speedo. Leaf's completely finished now. Um, I don't know how well it's going to show up in the camera, but they're all really smooth. Um, I've got it all sanded out with the stone wheel, which you would have just seen. So that's done. The next part that I'm going to need to do will be working on these guys. So this, um, I don't really know what you call it, a cantilever, I suppose, for the brake shoe. That's pretty rough on the inside there on that edge, so I'm going to have to clean that up and then that needs to have just a wee bit of grease to make it move a bit freer. I've got the new brake shoes to put on and because this guy now fits into the wheel properly, I can grease, uh, it's gone very dark, sorry, I can grease that up in there, um, send this guy home and then essentially fit the rear wheel to the bike. far as I'm going to get with this today. I'm running out of light again so um, I'll go a quick run through of what I've done with the bike and uh, what's still left to do. Alright so starting at the back and moving forward uh, you can see that I've got the rear rim on that's mounted uh, I would say 95% now. Uh, I still have to do a little bit of mucking around with the brakes uh, it's just not quite doing what I thought it was going to but that's okay not too stressed about that. Uh, you can see sort of in here that the shock absorbers are now colour coded and completely fitted to the bike. Uh, further to that, I can't remember if I've mentioned this or not, but I've now made the brackets for the indicator mounts. Uh, that took a lot longer than I anticipated, uh, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It looks kind of factory. Uh, moving forward, you can see the exhaust is now on the bike, so that's all colour coded. Um, the exhaust itself has been heat treated, uh, same ceramic coating as the engine. So that's all on and done. Uh, Kickstarter is now on. Uh, I think I mentioned to you guys that we've got the custom sticker work on here. So, um, like I said, still says Honda, still says Trail 90. Obviously added the Bad Idea Bros sticker to there. There will be another on the front guard once I've gotten that done. Um, still got the temporary wheel on the front. That's just to stop the bike from falling over. Um, moving up. I've got the mirrors on the bike now, not a big job but something needed to happen. Headlight buckets on, um, gauges in there, I've got the speedo cable connected but I think I'm going to need to muck around with a little more and I've obviously still got all the wiring to do. So that's as far as we're going to get with this one today guys. Um, I'm pretty exhausted to be honest, I've been putting a lot of hours in on this bike recently. So I'm going to call the night and we'll come back to this tomorrow. Uh, so what are we doing today? Let's have a think. I've got the front wheel now um, that I have stripped and painted uh, to match the rear off of camera. Um, I just can't get all this content into you guys and have enough time to finish this bike. So it's just going to be a bit of a gloss over today. Uh, but we'll get the front wheel on. Um, I'm still waiting for the brake disc that should be here Monday, Tuesday, hopefully. <laughs> um, if not, I'm kind of screwed. So that'll get the front end of the bike sorted, 
I can then work on the front guard because I need the front rim and tire on to know where to set the guard. There's quite a lot of work in that, so I'm going to, well, the plan is to modify the standard guard from the CT90, uh, make some custom brackets, bits and pieces. It's going to be a lot of work. That's probably going to be the majority of the day. Uh, what else? I've got the wiring to finalise and the rear brake to finalise. So the list is getting pretty short, thankfully. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's gosh knows, I don't know how many days and how many hours I've put into this thing now. A lot. Um, it's all sort of blended together a little bit. But uh, yeah, let's crack on and see how far we can get with this one today. I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do Well I'ma make hella shit sure that I don't become you I have no regrets, yeah I'll tie up my chest I'll never forget what it's like to be in debt Been stabbed in the back bed I'll show you what happens Pass me the mic and I'll show you with action I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to games, let my money show I've got these things that I can't let go Watch me turn this life into something that you can never own I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to games, let my money show I've got these things that I can't let go Watch me turn this life into something that you can never own So fight and fight Sid's run is in two days, and at present, the CT90 is not going to make it. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that, and I'll go through those uh, later. I'm also going to cover a few things about the bike that I've had a lot of questions about, and I've got to be honest, I'm really stoked that you guys have taken so much interest in this little build. Uh, it's very humbling that so many of you are interested in what I've done with this bike, the parts that I've used, and how I've managed to do the things. So um, without further ado, I'm going to spin the camera around and we'll start going over the bikes and uh, explain what I've done. Alrighty, so starting from the front, I um, had a lot of concern that there was no front guard on the bike. That's obviously not the case anymore. So I altered the factory CT90 guard. Um, for those of you that are familiar, they're quite a large square guard on these things normally. Um, and they've got all the bracketry and um, framework, I suppose, that makes them a bit stiffer. Uh, what I've done with this one is trimmed it down to uh, more of a cafe racer style guard and just used um, some flat steel to make mounts to mount the guard just on the side there, as you guys can see. And it's also got a mount for the hydraulic brake line. Uh, while we're at the front, um, this bike is running 17 inch front and rear. Obviously it has a hydraulic um, conversion on the front end. You can see the uh, caliper desk down to the right of the wheel there. What's missing and what a few of you picked up in the photos I posted earlier is there's no disc on this bike. And that is basically the biggest thing that is stopping me from making SIDS run with this, uh, this CT. The disc I ordered, um, the easiest way to explain it is that it's the wrong size. So unfortunately that is the main thing that's stopping the bike. So moving up from that, we've got the front forks, um, obviously a defining feature on this bike, um, a fair bit of effort to get them on as described in a few of the responses I've given on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, they're gold anodized upside down forks, uh, originally from a 125cc pit bike, so we've got a bit more travel, they are a bit higher. Um, the common question I'm getting is what did it take to get these on the bike? Well, you're not really going to be able to see, but... Um, in the lower plate and the upper plate, I had to get some 42 mil NSK bearings machined down to suit the CT's frame. Um, so the OD was correct for this plate, but um, it just wasn't going to work with the frames it was. So went and saw uh, the guys at Da Vinci Steelcraft and they sorted that out for me. So basically dropped off all the parts, the bearings and whatnot, and they made it happen for me. Um, the other thing that needed to happen, and I do apologize for this, it's going to be really hard to see, but in here on the bottom plate is the steering stop, just where my finger is. Had to do a lot of machining to get that in the right position to work again with the CT's frame. 
All right, so moving from there, it's got the the factory handlebars. Um, obviously, we've got a hydraulic style um, brake line caliper and all that sort of thing. Other than that's pretty standard. Um, I've got the OEM Honda indicators, standard mirrors, handlebars are the standard my items just painted black. The switch controls that are on this bike are a more modern setup. Um, took a bit to figure out the wiring for these as a few extra inputs than the originals but made it work. Uh, moving from there, the seat. Now the seat's a bit of a sore point for me. I picked um, this particular colour and this material. I like the pattern and everything that's on it but the colour isn't what I was expecting. Um, that's on me, not on the upholsterer. I picked the grey suede, it just doesn't look the way I thought it was going to on the bike. So that's going to be changed in the future. Um, probably just go to black and keep it black. Um, what else have we been asked? So the paint colour. Uh, this is a clone of the um, Volkswagen Audi Group Grey that you would see on like a GTI Golfs. Um, the little hot Audi hatches, I think, come out in the grey as well. Um, so that's basically what that is. The designs, so the Honda Trail 90, um, they were done by a fella here in Christchurch uh, named Smeagol. He did all the designs for me and they're just vinyl cut, um, clear coat over. The motor is a standard 90cc high-low ratio. I wanted to keep that in the bike for now. Um, as I've hinted in a few of my posts, there will be an engine swap coming up in the future. I'm just working away on that at the moment. Uh, moving back from there, we've got the rear suspension. Um, that came out of my Kiwi CR152. Um, I'll touch on that shortly. Um, all it's been done is pulled down, cleaned, and then I've painted the top area to match the, the front shocks. And that's pretty much it. Um, rear wheel is a standard CT90 rear wheel, um, sprocket standard. If you go back and view, I think, episode 5, maybe 6 of this bike, um, you'll see that I'm running the standard CT90 Speedo on the rear wheel. So the arrangement's still exactly the same as it was on the front because the rear runs the same size drum. I just had to machine a couple of notches to take the Speedo drive. If you're more interested to see how I actually did that, go back and watch a previous episode um, or ask some questions below. I'm more than happy to, to answer anything like that. Uh, you can see that it's got the standard rack. Um, all, well not all, but most of the chrome's been deleted. Um, again, running the OEM style CT tail lights here. A lot of you guys have actually asked about the brackets um, for the rear indicator mounts. I made those. Um, I kind of got into a position where I had to. I was on the hunt for some CG125 indicator mounts. Um, they are the right style for what I was trying to do with this bike. Uh, that didn't eventuate. I couldn't get the C90 brackets. It's a whole thing. Um, I ended up just fabricating them. So these are all made out of stainless steel. Um, that is half inch stainless steel pipe that I flared on the inside edge to accept this bracket. And then it's got the aftermarket button head um, Allen screw retaining bolts, which I've actually gone through the whole bike. Um, so I don't know if you can see in there, but even the, the mounting on everything for this is just the Wii um, Allen key. I've decided to upgrade to everything. I just like the look of it and I prefer the Allen key bolts. Uh, the exhaust is standard. It's pretty much a standard bike, um, other than the few obvious mods of suspension in the, the front end. So that, I think, should answer most of the questions that you guys had. Um, I have been asked how much did it cost. To be genuinely honest, I don't know. My estimate would probably be around 3000 New Zealand dollars um, that I've put into this thing. That would include buying the bike. I actually picked it up quite cheap, so I was very lucky there. And the rest of that's just uh, hours spent working on it. If I was to have paid... Um, paid a shop to do all of the work, then this probably would have been a five or $6,000 build. Everything you see on this bike I've done with the exception of the front end. Um, again, DaVinci Steelcraft did that for me. Go and check those guys out. They're awesome. They're located here in Christchurch. Really know what they're up to. But uh, yeah, guys, that's that's the CT90. It, it looks complete and it pretty much is complete. Um, it's just a couple of little things that are stopping me from getting this going. So... Unfortunately, unless a miracle happens in the next uh, day and a half, this thing will be sitting in the shed for Sid's run.